37 separate occasions, President Obama promised, if you like what you've got, you can keep it. Unfortunately, the Obama administration has broken that promise. The administration published a regulation that will fundamentally change the health insurance plans of millions of Americans. The reality of this new regulation is that if you like what you have, you can't keep it. That was not this week. That was more than three years ago. Republican Senator Mike Enzi calling out Obamacare regulations that he said violated the president's, if you like your plan, you can keep it, period, pledge. He was ignored and even mocked by his Democratic counterparts at the time, accused of fear-mongering. But many of his predictions are now coming true, like this one. The final result of the new regulation will be that all Americans will eventually be forced to buy the kind of health insurance the federal government thinks you should have. Another prediction about what employers are likely to do in the wake of Obamacare. Listen. That employers will be less likely to hire new workers and probably even lay off workers. Investors Business Daily has published a list of more than 350 employers who it says have cut worker hours and staff because of the mandates of this law. Senator Enzi also warned that Obamacare takes a hatchet to the employer-sponsored health care market. The regulation is crystal clear. Most businesses, the administration estimates, between 39 and 69 percent will not be able to keep the coverage that they have. Just this week, a Duke University report predicted 68 percent of those who have employer-based plans will experience significant disruption. And finally, there was this. This new regulation appears to ignore the impact it'll have in the real world. It'll drive up costs and reduce the number of people who have insurance. Just yesterday, the Manhattan Institute released a 49-state report finding that average premiums will increase by 41 percent under Obamacare. And as for his prediction that this law will actually reduce the number of people with insurance, well, Republican Wyoming Senator Mike Enzi joins me now. Senator, wow. Uh, le let me take you back to September of 2010 when you, unlike most of the world, actually read the Federal Register and these regulations that Kathleen Sebelius had pushed through shortly after Obamacare became law, hobbling the ability of people to keep their plan as the president claimed they would. You read it, you saw it, and you went to the Senate floor to do what? I took a, a bill to repeal that particular provision so that people would be able to keep their insurance, that they were promised they could keep. This presidential mantra that goes on and on and on, the Democrats believe. And as a result, they defeated my repeal amendment. And so we're still stuck at this point with the same thing. How many Democrats voted in favor of your proposal? Every one of the Democrats voted in favor of it. That puts America at risk, and it should put their jobs at risk. They voted against your attempt to fix this regulation. That's right. I, I, my, my attempt to make what the president was saying come true. He didn't like it. He likes the mantra. The mantra was still on the White House website at 4 o'clock this afternoon saying, if you like what you've got, you can keep it. And you don't have to do a thing to keep your plan. That's wrong. It's been wrong for three years. And they won't change it. At the time, uh, Max Baucus called this your move to try to fix this a political stunt. Uh, Senator Tom Harkin talked about how this was another attempt to make good on a pledge to undo uh, critically important patient protections. Uh, Senator Durbin accused you of wanting to empower insurance companies. Uh, and on and on it went. Did you feel like the message was getting through at the time? Uh, the president's mantra controlled the Democrats. They weren't listening. They didn't intend to listen. And they, they should have listened. Um, I couldn't believe what some of my colleagues were saying, even though the Federal Register said considerably different than what they did. It predicted the millions that were going to lose their health insurance. And in Wyoming, just last Saturday, 2,600 more people, and we're the least populated state in the nation, lost the health care. And the insurance commissioner assures me that it's health insurance that they wanted to have. Across the United States, over three and a half million people have already lost the insurance they were promised they could keep if they liked it. And they liked it, 
and they don't like the extra requirements that are in there now. And as you uh, saw so these, these millions of people start to get canceled, you know, in the past couple of weeks, what did you think to yourself? I thought back to the 2010 when we said this is going to happen and everybody said no it, it won't happen we can ignore it we've got a perfect plan. This has not been a perfect plan from the start. I really object to how the president says this is settled law you can't make any changes but yet he makes changes without it being available in the law. He, he avoids the law and voids part of the law in order to have his predictions come out right but he doesn't listen. And what do you see? I mean, as the man, you know, as the Paul Revere uh, of, uh, you know, the, some of the consequences of this law, what do you see happening in the future, especially once this employer mandate kicks in? Well, Senator Ron Johnson has been working on a bill that would do what my repeal bill would do, which is to allow people to keep what they have. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Democrats put up the same kind of a, a defense again, although I'll, I would imagine that some of them are going to kind of co-opt that and say they thought of it and bring it to the floor. And uh, maybe, it, maybe it will pass with the president's blessing. But I can't believe that it would if he still has on his website this mantra of untruth that he has. Senator Enzi, thanks for being here. It's interesting to look back then uh, at Thank what you, you said. All the best, sir.